everyone, this is Peter and Lori with Prophetic Watchman 88. Before we get started, please hit like and subscribe. Even if you think you're already subscribed, just double check. We'd appreciate it. Hi, Lori. I have my beautiful bride here. Oh, looking gorgeous. How are you today? Good. <laughs> that's that's a lot. Are you convinced? <laughs> I'm convinced. Are you convinced? So we have a pretty big topic. We yeah. have a pretty big topic talking about uh, spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare, and uh, because this this guy is, is so, it's a big topic like it is. I mean, we're not going to go in in a lot a lot of detail, but we're going to give our own personal experience and go through the scriptures. This is going to be a teaching video and some uh, who knows whatever the Holy Spirit may he. And testimony. Testimonies, and he may release some ministry, actually, through this. I mean, it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. <clears throat> so, anyway, because it's so big, here we go. We don't know how long it's going to be on this video, but let's get right into this. Wow, you shall not pass. <laughs> what do you think about this picture right here? That's pretty cool. This is our topic, spiritual warfare. It's a massive, massive thing, and we want to make sure we understand who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. We're pointing everyone to Jesus Christ. He is our Lord, our Savior, our God, our Master, our King, our everything. Yes. Our all in all. It's all about Jesus. <clears throat> and so, for those of you that are in Christ, we're going to learn some really cool stuff today and have a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so. Is this um is this Lord of the Rings? Yes, this is Lord of the Rings. Uh without getting into a lot of detail, but yes, this is that. And so it, if you if you've seen the movie, obviously, this massive demonic force is coming against them and he just ignites his power. Uh, we have a much bigger power, but this is just a great picture of that, I think. What do you yeah. think? Okay. Now we're gonna go first to the scriptures. So hopefully this is gonna work. So let us go to the scriptures. There we go. Okay, we're going to start out in Hebrews chapter 5. And guys, we're going to take our time because we want to make sure we're all on the same page and we understand just, just, it's so, just so good, it's so meaty. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> now, in Hebrews chapter 5, let, let's just assume Paul wrote this. There's a lot of debate who wrote what, but let, let's just assume we give it to Paul. Okay, in, in the scriptures ahead of this, ahead of chapter, uh, verse 14, He's saying, by now, you guys, the Hebrews he's talking to, you guys should be teachers. You guys should not be on milk anymore. You've been doing this long enough. So that's speaking to anyone out there. <clears throat> Let's get a hold of this, okay? So in this verse, Paul comes and says, but strong meat, <laughs> strong meat. And if, if we dig in there, that strong meat, that it, it's, 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 it's thick, it's rich, it's hard to get down. It's not like milk. Yeah. Right? It's not easy. It can be difficult when you're when you're talking about this strong meat that Paul's mentioning here. What do you think? Yeah. So far, right? Okay. Now, but so but strong meat belongs to those who are of full age, or they give that picture of maturity in Christ. They're 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 not babies, right? Um, and there's nothing wrong with the, the the being babes in Christ. Right. It's a process. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. But what the scriptures here are saying for those of us that have been doing this a while. Yeah. We should be teaching others by now. Mm -hmm. Why are you still wanting milk? That's the picture we're getting here, right? Yeah. It's not a bad to be a baby. It's just, hey, we got a process. We've got to get on our way. Yeah. Okay, so this part is for those that, that are, want to move on, go deeper, and for that are more of a full age, this kind of strong meat. Okay, so this, this is the good part. So by reason of use. Now, this is where it gets, I think is cool. By reason of use, that word use there, is, um, well, let's just pop right in there. We're, we might lag a little bit, but since we're live, hopefully it's going to work. Okay, I see it right there. Ah, that word use, by habit, okay, in body, mind, power acquired by custom, practice, or use. Okay, so get that idea, and I'm sorry if I'm going a little fast for some of you guys. I really apologize. So we want to slow down. So by reason of this habit that we need to develop, Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this habit that we need to develop, the uh, us mature in Christ, are developing this habit, and this habit to have our senses. Now our senses is our physical senses, mm -hmm. and our spiritual senses. Mm -hmm. We must understand this. Okay. So by reason of use, by using all of our senses. Okay. Yeah. Having them exercise. Now this word right here is really cool because it gives it gives um <laughs> vigorously training mm -hmm. like like an athlete towards the Olympics towards again uh, put whatever sport you want in there but it is an uh, an intense training. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are 
we are we are developing these habits by you by reason of use developing these habits okay and they are being trained we are being trained so that we can discern both good and evil we will be able to know in Christ through the Holy Spirit what is good and what is evil yeah anything to add to that so far right there hmm that's so go ahead well, it, talk about um, by reason of use mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> is that it's just like as a child as you grow up you know the more that um, you play and do things right. and you develop motor skills right the um, you know, and then you get older, and then you're you're developing social skills. Right, you hang around with other kids or whatever. <clears throat> you're absolutely right. But and it's <clears throat> like it's interesting because like it's like riding a bike. Right, it is like okay, <laughs> it is like riding a bike. You know what came back to my memory, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. by reason of use, guys. When we were younger Christians, this has to be wow. We, okay, the first time we in know the that. 90s. We, well, yeah, when we, we were in Virginia. Yeah. God was showing us so many things, just in, in the spirit, like the, the right. gifts, the fruit, <laughs> every the miraculous power of God, and we'll get into some of that. But He let us practice. Right. We would practice. We would on practice each on each other. If so, if one of us was sick, we would engage with God and we would believe and we pray for that. Or if if whatever it was, if we needed deliverance, no matter what, we we would have fun. Yeah. In our sanctuary, <laughs> in our bedroom, just us two having fun with God. We were we were using yes and God what God was allowing our senses to be developed right how to hear and over time Good. they get sharper yes. you know yes. the more that you practice it and then there was like a time in our life where um, <clears throat> things were just kind of dark <clears throat> okay. like like we went through a little dark period yeah we did and and we didn't practice these things right and the enemy put really, them on the shelf really started to get a foothold between oh, us wait a and and it was because you know we knew that we needed to do this you're right together, you're right but we wouldn't come together right and we wouldn't fight it you know what right. I mean? it was almost like we like the enemy had a foothold until the Lord moved us and we, <clears throat> our eyes were open. Right, right, right. We had to be. We were ready to kick this <laughs> devil's butt. <laughs> <laughs> kick it some devil butt. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, My... and then after that, after right. we got all that worked out, and then, and the, and, and, and the Lord brought such healing into our marriage. Yes, absolutely. And um, we just really surrendered to him. Remember our all-in story? All-in, like yeah, we, you, yeah. We've done that in a video. We're all-in. <clears throat> as soon as we did that, it was like he started a, a really cool process in us. Like he was getting yeah. ready for, getting us ready for this time frame. It, for this He's moment like, right now. He's like, let me show you everything, everywhere that you went, everywhere that yes. you guys moved. Yeah. This is what he did in you. This yes. Is, he actually took us On through that, that when we were locked down for the last, Oh, that's you know right. What? That's right. That's and, right. And um, we were just praying and it was like God came and he talked to us and showed us Can everything that he did wherever we were. It was like he said, look, I taught you all these things to, to prepare you for such a time I'm as now. this. Yes, is now. Yes. And he showed us our journey as a river and then all the little rivers that, that made the big river in our in our journey. Yeah. Everything that added to what God was doing. Um, there's all those, you know, uh, you don't throw the baby away with the bath water and, you know, uh, eat the, the hay, spit out the sticks, all those different sayings. So, yes, we there was that uh, religious spirit that some institutions that people had but God in the middle of all that was giving us his best yes it was amazing and, and the things that he developed so in reason of use we would use them right right and then they got put in the shelf and then we brought them back God showed us hey it is time yeah it's time it yeah. is time. he's like you guys need to knock it off and get yeah. yourselves <laughs> get humble focused. yourselves yes. humble yourselves oh, before each yes. other and, and let's deal with it yes and it was so we dealt with it and moved on and we did and God is awesome. Jesus Christ is our focus. And so by going through that, iron sharpens iron. And going through all the, 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 the use and that exercise, mm -hmm. we, not that we're perfect. Guys, we are no. far from, we're not perfect. No. We know when God is revealing. We know when, when good is moving. We know when evil is moving. Just like the scriptures say, just like you guys know. It, it's that gut feel. It's that you know it. Yeah. You know it. And... Like you can ask him questions, and he does reveal things oh, to us. Oh, absolutely! You know? Ask him questions. <laughs> anyway, that's <laughs> a, yeah. 
It made me think of the AI Jesus. People are asking AI Jesus all kinds of questions, and I'm like, why can't you ask the real Jesus Christ? You'll get way better answers. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, in James 5, it talks about if you ask and you believe that he hears you, then he will come through. Right. In other words, it, it takes faith. It is faith. It's all it faith. It takes faith. But if you have a little bit of faith, little mother faith, little bit of faith, little mother faith. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. true. So, you ready? Yeah. Okay, okay. That's just the focus. Okay. And we have to have that right. little bit of faith. Everybody, yep. once they get saved, they have to have that little yeah. bit because right. he deposits that right. little seed of yes. faith in us yes. when we receive him. By grace through faith. So they're we have both to of have him. faith in order to believe in him. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. It, guys, we can go on and on and on with scriptures. We can do this all day. Yeah. But are we good with Hebrews 5 14 for now? Right now, doing this video, all of us together, we are we are exercising. We're going to exercise the gifts. We're going to exercise with the Holy Spirit. We're co-laboring with Christ. We're going to have some fun this video. Yeah. We might even do some activations. Who knows? Who knows? We'll just see what the Holy Spirit's doing. That's some fun stuff right there. Anyways, now from here, the next scripture we're going to go to is this. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. I hope you're following along with your Bibles. <laughs> if you're not, it's on the screen. Okay, we're still recording? Great. Now, this is very, very, very important. You guys know the scripture, but let's break it down just a little bit. Okay, it says, least Satan, where, so we know we're talking about Satan, least Satan should get an advantage over us. What were we just talking about? Where we let the devil get a foothold, have an advantage, a little crack. He got in there and began to do a separation and just a, a destructive yeah. kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. This is what happened. Yeah. Okay, but now look at this. Paul says... For we are not ignorant. We're not stupid. We're, we, we know better. We know we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. What? Now, you mean like this device? <laughs> it could be. Yes, it could be like or, that. Or like, you know, it's any Go device. Well, and also, yes, it, it gives the, the, the idea of a thought process, all evil intent, but a thought process against God, something that is separating from God, but it's the whole schemes. Mm -hmm. So anything Satan can do, his yeah. schemes, his weapons, his thoughts, his plans, mm -hmm. anything he can come up with, mm -hmm. we are not ignorant of those things. So Go ahead. I want to give a little bit of shout out. Go ahead, shout it out. <clears throat> um, I remember one time I was driving home from Oregon, and that's about a six, seven hour drive. Yeah. Five, about six hour drive. Okay. And um, uh, by the time that I got home, I was so angry with Pete. Oh, gosh. And I was by myself. I, I remember was this. Home. And <laughs> the thing is, is that there are certain music that you because know, i mean that's what i do i let that's what keeps me going i right, listen right. to music course, i sing songs all the way to god and everything. but here's the thing is that um some some music is crafted to cause you to think about things a certain way um reminisce about maybe an old love or whatever triggered. or you get triggered yep. whatever it is and then you start taking hold of that thought right and then there. you start thinking about that thought and that when when the lord when um it says also on imagination casting down oh yeah we're gonna get to that right 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 but but we can't i mean you know it's funny that the world says use your imagination <laughs> when you know the lord says cast down yeah we're, yeah, we're, and, yeah and we're gonna get to not that, that he's not right. saying you can't be creative right but you need to take captive of every thought because you never know what is you know it's like yeah you know yeah you're absolutely right yeah <laughs> and you're jumping ahead I and you're jumping ahead, ahead. but but, but, but it's okay it's okay that, like, go ahead, go devices ahead. as far as music goes books right, right. movies our phones our Any internet media entertainment. whatever it is right it has the potential of potential and you could even throw and you have to be discerning and throw all technology in there throw ai in there right you have to Right. You know, throw the weed, all of it, the Ouija, the boy, throw every device you can think of, every technology you can think of, you can throw into those devices because mm -hmm. they have the potential to be used by the enemy. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. And I'm not trying to cut you off, but you're, you're going to, you're going to be going on right. the other ones right. a lot. And not that, you know, certain songs God can't use. Right. I'm just saying that, um, 
you have to be discerning. You have to discern what. And that's what the other the first what you're verse. Listening exactly. to what you're watching. Can, can can I say something in that respect? Especially during this time, you go know. Ahead, go ahead. I'm just saying that we. Yes. Are, 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 we have to be aware. Aware. We're not ignorant. Stay alert. Stay alert. Stay alive. Stay alert. Stay alive. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So we're not trying to get into the good, bad, ugly. We're not doing that. We're not talking about the, you know, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil versus the tree of life right now. Mm -hmm. We're exposing the enemy's devices, mm -hmm. how he uses them against us when we're not aware. Right. When our, our guard's down. When our guard's or... down. He can take a, a stronghold. Right. Or take right. advantage. Okay. You ready? Uh-huh. Okay. Next verse. We're doing okay on time. We're doing pretty good. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. Now... <clears throat> This is only up here to remind us of our last video that we are not fighting against humans. Right. We have to remember that. Do you remember that? Hopefully you saw our last video, which was AI, the beast system. Okay. God revealed to us we are not fighting against humans. And then he revealed who we are fighting against. And just to sum it up, every single thing that is evil, dark, sinister, absolute, yuck, sin. That's who we are fighting against. And it's from powers that are not from our 3D world, but from a, the invisible realm. Right. We talked about that, the spiritual dimension. They're not from here. They're not from a different planet. They're not from 3D land. Right. Okay, so that's who we're fighting against. So that's very important, and they are absolutely wicked. <clears throat> there is no good thing, no light in them at all. Darkness. We went over that, but just a reminder. Okay. So now we're going to come to our, that major scripture that we're going to go <clears throat> talk about in the battle. Okie dokie. Right here. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. Let's try to get through this. Okay. We're going to take our time and we're going to walk through <clears throat> these important words. All right. Now look at this beautiful, beautiful scripture. <clears throat> at top. Verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now that's very simple, yada, 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 I get it. We do not war with anything that humans can come up with as a weapon. This has nothing to do with humans, once again. So even though we are human, we do not war according to the way humans war. or That includes our weapon, all that. You, you got right. some? Right. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare <clears throat> are not of human origin. So there you go. <clears throat> I apologize for my throat. <clears> throat> Something's going on with it. It will be okay in a second. So again, for even though we're humans, we do not war <clears throat> according to human ways. Our weapons of warfare are not of human origin. They're not carnal. They're not, again, things that we can make. Now, can I just pause there for a second? I got to tell you a story on a dream. Okay, when we were still living in Virginia years ago, twenty over twenty years ago, God gave me a dream. We were in Virginia, and He gave me a dream of my parents' house, which is here in the town over here where my mom still lives. And in my dream, I was in the garage. Okay, I was in the garage in my dream. <clears throat> Lori was hanging around somewhere, but I was really bad. I was really, I was upset. I was really upset because. Now, it had nothing to do with it, but it's my dream. It, a, a, a former boyfriend was coming over to visit. Of yours or mine? Aha, funny. <laughs> a former boyfriend of Lori's was, in my dream was coming over to visit. So I was ticked off, and I was in the garage of my parents' home here in California, in the garage, and I was making weapons. Physical, I was making spears. I was making swords. And I mean, I was making awesome, beautiful weapons that could do some damage. I was so mad i was just we're just <laughs> and i was making these weapons because this person was going to come okay so in my dream this person i have all the weapons ready to go this person shows up we're in front of we're in front in my dream in front of my mom and dad's house in the front yard <clears throat> this person walks up and she's with me and i see this person i have my weapons on me i get my weapon out i first thing i pull out is the spear that i made i'm just go i'm just going to take this guy out i went wham wham and i'm trying to stab him with the spear. And every time I'm hitting him with the spear, the spear is going, whoop, whoop, whoop. It's bending. And it won't do any damage. It won't do anything. It, it won't even penetrate. It won't even come close to him. It just bends. And so I use the other one. I'm like, what? Ah! And 
In my mind, I'm going, all that time I spent on these weapons and they're doing nothing. Instantly, in the dream, in my spirit, I heard, why are you using those weapons? Use my weapons that I've given you. And I went, whoa, in my dream. I'm not kidding. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. And in my dream, it went, bam. And the Spirit of God hit this person. And I was expecting this person to be obliterated and gone. And, you know, I was like, yay, he's dead. <laughs> but I, I, I was dreaming. <laughs> when the power of God hit that person, all the darkness in that person shattered and left. And I went, what? Whoa. And all of a sudden, we had um, a godly love for this person, and we walked over there and received that person in. It, was not, it wasn't a physical person of, oh, yeah, it was that boyfriend. That, it was a conglomerate of just, I knew in the past. Right. But the point of the story is, I was sitting there building, literally in my dream, making weapons of warfare with my own hands in our 3D realm and our 3D world the best that I could right. in my own works. Right. <clears throat> and it wasn't enough. It was it, not enough. It did nothing. Right. That leads us to that, that scripture. Do you remember in the book of Acts? Uh, they, the seven, seven sons of Sceva tried to uh, cast out the, the demon in this person. And, and they're like, hey, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, come out. <laughs> Please. And the demon turns to them in the book of Acts and says, Jesus I know and Paul I recognize. Who are you? And then he destroys them. Guys, so this is not game. So in my dream, <clears throat> you can't play. It's, God was showing me, use what God has given us to do the battle that we need to do right here in 3D world. And they come from him. So, long story short, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of human origin. But they are mighty through God and in God. Now that word mighty is connected with the dunamis, dunamis power of God. When, when, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you shall be, you know, the dunamis power of God is activated in the book of Acts. The book of Acts comes alive in us. That's that right there. So the dunamis power. So, back up. <laughs> so our weapons are not of carnal, but they are mighty through God, the dunamis power of God, for the pulling down of strongholds. But we're going to camp out here for a second on pulling down because it's important. <laughs> Let me take a drink. You okay? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> the pulling down of strongholds and the casting down of imaginations. But before we go there, pulling down and casting down are the same root word. <clears throat> Here's why it's important. I know to pulling down sounds fun. You know, maybe you throw some hooks and rope and you... Ah, you pull it, you gotta pull it down. This word means an absolute destruction. You're gonna annihilate, you're gonna obliterate, you're gonna destroy, mm -hmm. destroy strongholds. We're gonna tackle strongholds first. It reminds me Go of ahead. like when you were a kid and you played those like King of the Hill games oh, yeah. or something or or <laughs> right. or dodgeball or well, Oh gosh, yes. Yes. You know, like you you you're always like trying to be <clears throat> The king. Now listen, I don't know how your generation Stop. plays those kinds of games of King of the Hill and Dodgeball and things of such. Even Tetherball and Lawn Darts. But that's why it reminds me of pulling down. Right. <laughs> Our version of all those things are violent. <laughs> violent. And this is violent. Yeah. God is violent. God's people are violent. In love, but we're violent. In the spirit. Uh, there you go. In the there you High five. In the spirit. Okay, now. For the pulling down of strongholds. Now, strongholds, we've covered this in other videos, but um, high level, stronghold can be anything of the enemy mm -hmm. that has latched on. It could be, uh, and it's more than that, but uh, first of all, let's think physically, uh, uh, individually, people. Let's just take people for a second. We can have strongholds through past experiences of life, ungodly beliefs, curses, you know, generational curses, sins of the fathers, things like that. Strongholds develop. I, I, it's okay. The cool thing is, in Christ, we can destroy these strongholds. So these things that, that make us think that we're something else, but we know that God says we're this and there's that, that struggle. God says we can destroy those things. Mm -hmm. uh, that's on an individual level. You want to add to, on, on that? An individual? Deliverance? Destroying strongholds? No. Okay. I have something to add corporately. 
<laughs> okay, so now let's go. Now we're going corporately. So now corporately thinking from strongholds. Yeah. Corporate, go ahead. Governmental. Governmental strongholds. Okay, now we're thinking bride, ecclesia, yes. worldwide. Go ahead. Right. Should I tell our story? Yes, okay. come on. So um, when we were in Oregon, and I know we shared some of this before, so some of you may have heard this part. Right. But <clears throat> the Lord really put, pressed on us that just to pray against a spirit of Jezebel over our country. And Ahab. Yes, yeah, and Ahab. Yes, but go ahead. And um, and we did. We started praying. We started praying together. Right. Um, we're, we, we engaged, and God gave us scriptures. Yeah, so yeah. It, it was a, okay, it was a it battle. Was a, it was a God moment. In the spirit, tell. and yeah. it, last, it was very short. Right. The time that this happened was very short. But all of a sudden, can I just say? Yeah. When we engaged in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, Almighty God took us in the spirit realm, and we saw the... The, the, the spirit of Jezebel that is over this country that's in, in, in D.C. and others, but over this country, and the spirit of Ahab. And it's important that we talk about both because the Ahab, that king, that yeah. he supports Jezebel. Right. Okay. And I think there's more than one. Of like, course, of course. I, I, I've really felt, yeah. Yeah. and I'm not going to say names. No, 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 right, right. But I really felt like that there was this one female figure. Right. That is behind a lot of right. these main guys that go. are up front. There you go. These, um, I feel like that. And she their is agenda, a right. Their agenda is right. the one that's coming across. Good. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so remember, we're not talking humans, <laughs> right. but humans are puppets, and some of them willingly give themselves over to the enemy. Okay. So that's that's the setup. Okay. Now, this human Jezebel that's operating in this in that evil spirit of Jezebel, there are multiple Ahabs that are prompting her up mm -hmm. well we went into the spirit to attack not the humans but the spirit god showed us that yeah. we were doing damage it was all of a sudden in the next day or two we saw evidence in the news right right that the, i'm just saying that there was evidence that our prayers mm -hmm. mattered and then um, go ahead go ahead and then we came back to california and yeah. then lo and behold we're getting ready to get hit by oh. a jezebel Storm. storm. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jezebel. Get it? Get it? Wink, wink. Starts with the um, H. Wink, wink. <laughs> the H storm. Yeah. Jezebel. And go so, ahead. And uh, so, hearing that we may have this storm, go ahead. Um, I started together. praying. Yep. We started praying against it because I really felt like this wasn't a not just an attack on us, but it, it kind of right. was an attack. Right. I right. mean, we were a dead center in the path. Right. And you know, right. so anyway, um, we started praying against it right. and all this, and then and so we were looking at the path. Yeah. That's, that's right. So we're watching the path, and you guys know the whole story. I don't want to bore you with that, but you see the path, and then it hits, and then it goes to San Diego, and then it does a hard left, <laughs> and it has to nail L.A. Right. Now a lot of people are saying it did that hard left to hit L.A. Because of what the Dodgers did. Right. Their stadium was flooded. They got wiped out. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Even though we know this is a judgment of God, we're also saying God's people can stand and pray as God directs. Yes. And he will do it. So as that storm was supposed yes. to come right over us, it darted from L.A. to, to Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> Sin City to Sin City. Now, of course, there's godly people there. I'm just yes. saying that when we prayed, all of a sudden it changed paths. It changed paths. And here's what's funny is that I kept looking for it. Like I kept thinking, right. is it going to come and hit? I mean, one night we got a little bit of wind right. and I thought this is this could be Right, it. right. And, and everything was dark. It was dark and it was dark. quiet and the whole... We started batting down hatches and stuff. Yeah. And then it stopped. Right. And then for the next two days, it was super still right like like not a bird chirping not uh a leaf blowing Just in the wind, wind. it was <laughs> so quiet still it's it was like eerie very eerie and, yeah. and and it felt like we were under a cover a, a, a like like like, a, like yeah protection like, yeah yeah a so dome of protection weird. yeah it, it was, was so now that we talk eerie. to think about it that's what it felt like yeah so yeah. anyway and okay and it and then after it hit vegas and stuff it, it pretty much right kind of fizzled out yeah, and wherever I mean, it's know, at now and the, all the threats of it you right know, the oh, mega it's threats. gonna go all the way to dc and everything else. oh yeah 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 so it's the enemy way to go the enemy can only go so far because the restrainer is here yes. and even yes. god the trials and tribulations are here jacob's yes. trouble hasn't started the yes. seals aren't open yet so right okay. and so that has been part of my prayer talking about the restrainer is that god 
I know that you are about ready to judge all these people, right. but I pray that you hold back right. in my area or right. in, over my family right. until the restrainer is taken away. Right, because, because then we're all God. Praying, I'm right. praying for all God's people to be protected. Everywhere, yeah. <laughs> okay, can I, can, I, I got, can I share this story? Yeah. Okay, back to, uh, so the pulling down of strongholds, cast down imagination, pulling down of strongholds corporately. When Lori and I engage, we are the ecclesia, just like you guys. Two or more gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, there he is, and we can do mighty damage to the enemy. So, I don't even know, was it a year, year and a half ago, when we were, when we were praying against that first Jezebel-type spirit, and we, were, we saw in the spirit that, that there was this, uh, it, was, it was D.C., it was a, the big cities, it was D.C., and this, this evil spirit, Jezebel spirit, was walking and doing damage over the over the city like you had a dream about right that. right yes but yeah. we were also we saw it when we were praying mm -hmm. yeah and so when this thing was going we were praying and while we were praying god showed me that this beam of light from god from our prayer went swam and it wham it hit this jezebel spirit this dark spirit over dc and it went bam and as it hit it it went and it recognized something of equal power just hit me and it was like i was like lori lori we just did damage to the enemy and we were praying and automatically because of who i am and god shows me through movies and us and all that i started thinking about the avengers the, now remember this the first time loki is there okay loki's there and he's doing damage and all of a sudden captain america shows up now loki don't know captain america at the time really and loki represents loki represents satan, satan completely he's the yeah. deceiver he's the jokester he's the all of that. Oh, look at this hand. Oh, don't look at that hand. All of right. it. Loki represents Satan. Okay. Captain America, whatever you want to say, let's just say <laughs> a warrior in God. Okay, whatever. My point is, Loki's there. And everyone around Loki is bowing down to Loki because he tells him to bow down. And everybody bows down except for one older gentleman. And he goes, I refuse to bow. You know, you know the line. And, and Loki's like, you better bow. He goes, I'm not going to bow to you. And so Loki's going to kill him. And so as Loki's getting ready to kill him, Captain America jumps right in the way and blocks it and sends a blow right to Loki. And Loki goes, bam! And as Loki gets hit, he realizes someone of equal power just hit me. And I want everyone to know that's watching. If you are in Christ... If you are in Christ, you are washed in the blood. You're separated from sin, okay? He, Almighty God, is in us. His DNA is in us. When we are competing against the dark forces, we are not of same equal force. Because we are in Christ, we are above yes. the dark forces. Greater is he. That is in, in us. Me. Yes, in us. us, in me, than he that's in the world. And we went over that before. We know who that is. It's Satan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... When we engage in the spirit and we pray, we do massive damage to the enemy, to the dark side. Mm -hmm. You have to know that. You have to know that. It's so important. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't care if it's something that you might think is small, doesn't really matter, or something massive that's just, uh, affecting the whole world. Our prayers matter. Yes. The prayers of the righteous. We're righteous because Jesus Christ put his righteousness in us. So our prayers avail much. Yes. Ooh, I like that. Okay, can I, I don't want to babble, 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 but I want to just mm -hmm. in that example right there. So that right there is just destroying. Pulling down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. Yeah. That's just pulling down strongholds right there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, so that's dest now, now, destroying now, strongholds. A, another, I'll, I'll point on another stronghold mm -hmm. is like, uh, like when you, like, uh, that if you're at your home. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you know, like spirit of alcoholism or oh. you're dealing with, you're, you, like, maybe any kind of stronghold. Any kind of stronghold that you feel like is overcome. Right, where you, has, you. Has been too much. Right. You're finally sick of it. Right. And you start praying against that spirit. You start pulling down a stronghold and you work start, with yes. the Lord. The Lord will guide you. And you will destroy, mm -hmm. destroy yes. the strongholds. Yes. You will destroy them. We have those things in our own life. We've done this. God has done this for us. We have so many experiences in this. And it's just beautiful, the freedom that you experience mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. 
Mm-hmm. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Yeah. Liberty. Yeah. Okay. So that's 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 just a stronghold. Sorry, I don't want to. Not sorry. That's strongholds. Okay, guys. Now for the casting down or the st- destroying of imaginations. Now that could be imagination. Now in Christ, <laughs> our imaginations are sanctified, cleansed, mm-hmm. washed. We have a godly imagination to see spiritual things. But also, at the same time, uh, if any imagination sneak in there, however they happen, right. we mm-hmm. must take control and destroy right. them. Because, go ahead, go ahead. like for instance, um, like if you have a fantasy thought life. There you go. You know. Um, you, Not fantasy football, but a fantasy thought life. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying that that right. like you think of something and oh, yeah. maybe maybe at first you are like no, I'm not going to think about that. Right. <clears throat> Here's the thing that I'm learning because this is all new to me too, taking captive of my thoughts. Is um as soon as I get a thought that I know that is not in the by in the word, that it goes against it, that it exalts itself. Anytime that I start thinking that I'm, I might be pretty good at something, or wow. I'm pretty good at pride, vanity, pride. arrogance. Oh, and, uh, wow! Believe me, I'm not perfect at it, but wow. I, I start praising God, there and I start go. rebuking it, and I start praising God. Like God, wow. you are above me. You are. I rebuke pride. Yes, that's awesome. Lord God, you know, I just start praising and worshiping God, and, and getting your, my mind off of it. Right, and your focus goes automatically back to Christ Jesus. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit points us directly back to yes. all truth. Who is Christ? Yes. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. I love that. And you, this you, is yeah. something that's new in my life that I've really been trying to take a hold of. Even though it's not new, but it's new. We've, ex- right. we've done this our entire Christian walk. We learned this years ago. Yeah. But now we've, we've discovered that we're, we're living what we've learned right. over the years. But we're you know, like, it. because we're in a different stage of life. Of course. Where we're taking of care of other people and stuff. And sometimes mm-hmm. you're... Um, you get wo- your ego gets wounded. Oh, or of course. Your pride oh, oh my gets gosh. wounded, or your hurt yeah. feelings. Guys, we or... got four. We're take, we got four families that we're taking care of. We're all gathered together. Yeah, take, but so so no. But you, know, you get you get those attitudes. Right. You get those personalities. You and get you the don't porcupines. want that to take root. Right. So you have to do something with it, and that's kick it out. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Can I tell you? Yeah. Because other watchmen talk about this, where even some watchmen and some people that leave comments in watchmen places, they all sit there and bicker. And they'll try to bring others, each other down. They're letting the enemy get a foothold. Right, right. Instead of taking captive, like which you already said right. it, but this, <clears throat> the last part of the scripture right here. Right. Okay, anything that exalts itself, you already did a beautiful job of that. And we have to bring into captivity. We arrest it. We arrest it. We bring it into captivity. We take it prisoner and we throw it away. Every We bind it up. Yes, we bind it up. Every thought. Now, here's that word again. Now, do you remember in the first scripture that we started with where it says we are not ignorant against all Satan's devices? Mm -hmm. That is this word right here. We're not ignorant against all his devices or thoughts. So we need to bring into captivity every thought as well as every device okay into the obedience of Christ now the beautiful thing about this word about obedience okay guys I gotta tell you this I I, I saw this not too long ago the picture of that word obedience and and the root word of that word um, is a person an attendant at the door we're at the door we're at the ready at the door waiting for the knock waiting for the noise, waiting for the voice or the knock so that we can be there to open. And we're hearkening for the voice, for the noise. We're, so that means we're attentive. That means we're attentive. We're not slacking or lazy or dull, but we're like Bereans. We're active. We're actively. So that that obedient is more like the Bereans, where they're daily searching the scriptures. They're coming together. They're not mm-hmm. slacking. They're ready for the revelation of Almighty God, so they know what's going on. Yeah. That's all from that word obedience. It's that that type of person. I love it. And that just that's who we're. That's what we want to be. Is that we're inspired to be that kind of person. Yeah. That kind of servant. <clears throat> okay. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um, I think uh, let's, we're, we're going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. Does that make that for what? We'll end it at, at verse five. Is that okay? Now, in this, I, I I want to tell just a couple things. Okay. A couple stories, guys, that go along with 
Jesus Christ, when he came, the uh, Philippians says, he made himself lower than the angels. We know this. So that means lower than the spiritual realm. So he could be like us. And then he made himself even lower than that because he came as a servant. He goes, I, I, I came to serve, not to be served. That's how he came. Okay. Now, in that, he served. He, 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 he went to the cross. He died. He was buried. He rose from the dead and he ascended. He, he became what he is now. Almighty God, all the fullness of Almighty God, the Godhead dwells in him. So he's Almighty God. Okay. So now he went from the, the lowest to back above. So now all of us who are in Christ, we skip the spiritual realm and we go directly into Christ. We are now above the dark side, above even the angels. And I don't mean pridefully because it's not us. <laughs> but when we come into Christ, we are above. We're with Almighty God. He says, you are one with me. We are one. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, I just got to get that out there because I got, that's, I'm going to tell you some stories and it's just crazy. So it's not about us. It's about God in us and our adventures. So put it on the, on the screen so we can okay. visualize okay. what we do with so, the spirit. <laughs> okay. So now this, this was a story about uh, me and Ed. another story about me and Eddie. Did I, I didn't tell this one about me and Eddie. That's right. So the same guy that wanted to take the light into the darkness. So we went into the, one of the most dangerous places in America. We did it. That same guy. He was a sheriff. He was a, he was a retired sheriff deputy. Okay. So uh, FYI, he was always caring. <laughs> anyway, my point is, he, when he was a younger Christian, we were mentoring him in Christ. And so we were showing him about the, the, the realness of God to experience everything about God that we could. If God said we can do it, we did it. Okay. Now, in doing that, <laughs> when we were mentoring him, we said, hey, there's a street fair coming up. And, and, and in this town, they have a, actually a pretty good size fair. All the vendors come and all crafts and all that. Well, in that, of course, you have some Christian booths and you have, you know, all these other things. You have all the different religions. Anyway, always they have a booth where the local uh, psychic comes and sets up her booth. Okay, now, <clears throat> so I said, hey, Ed, we're, we're, we were ministering. Actually, we were ministering at that. Um, we were doing what's called treasure hunts. I don't want to get into it, but we were having treasure hunts. We were engaging with people, seeing people saved, delivered, and healed. Okay, at the fair. I said, Ed, while we were doing this, I said, hey, buddy, you want to have some fun? You want to see some, uh, want to have some fun? He goes, what do you mean? We're having fun. I go, no, no. He goes, well, how about you and I go walk into the psychic booth? He goes, what? I go, let's just go see. Yeah, let's just go see what happens. Eh, you never know. So anyway, I take Ed with me. We go to the booth. Now, she's at the back of the booth. At least, you know, what is it? Maybe at least a 10 by 10, maybe a 10 by 15, but it's her booth. She's, it's open, but she's at the back. And she's got all her little fancy, you know, drapes and all that stuff. But you can see her. And she can see you. And so I walk in there and Ed is following me. Now, I walk in and I walk up right to her. And as soon as I walk in, bam, she locks up and she stops everything she's doing. She And her eyes are focused on me. And she won't leave me. <laughs> and I'm smiling. I go, hey, uh, how you doing? And she won't say nothing and all this stuff. And I'm just like, hey, we're just walking around. We just want to see what you're doing. Uh, is your business good today and all that? And she just goes, you're not here for that. And I knew instantly, and I just look at Ed, and Ed's like, he says a little, he's shaking. I know his hand is on his gun. <laughs> he's shaking, but he's not doing anything. He's just, he's like that, standing. And I'm looking, I start to smile, because I know now she's real. You guys know this. There are scam artists, there are con artists that, that use the psychic to make money. We all know that. But then there are those that have the real demonic spirit that they're operating in. Okay, this woman had the real one. And she's locked up and her eyes are looking at me and I'm smiling and she goes, you're not here for that. And so I walk in and I go, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I apologize. I said, I'm Peter and this is Ed. And I put my hand out to shake her hand and she doesn't move. And she goes, I don't shake hands. And I'm thinking, I'm sure she does because she reads palms and I don't know. You have to grab a hand to read it. You go, yeah, anyway, I'm being funny. But I said, oh, 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 I'm okay. I get it. And I said, well, um. God bless you, and I just hope you have a wonderful day. And and I that's all I'm that's all I'm saying. And I and she's just she's almost ready to explode, but she won't say nothing. She can't move. So I said, "Have a great day. God bless you. We'll we'll talk to you later." And uh, me and Ed go right. So we go down a couple booths over, and I go, "Ed, Ed, what what, what do you think? I just want to see what happened. What do you think?" He goes, "Dude, did you see what's going on?" I said, "What?" 
He goes, there was a light show. There was, there was lights going off all over the place. There was, there was clashes. There was, hey, he goes, I was scared. I was, did, you didn't see any of that? I go, hey, what are you talking about? He goes, dude, there was something going off on the spirit. And I thought everyone in that room saw what I saw. I go, Ed, I didn't see anything. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was awesome. It was a great encounter. Now, listen, you might make comments and say, oh, you didn't get her saved. You didn't minister to her. Yeah, I wasn't there for that. I was being led by God to take the one that we were mentoring in so he could see the light in the darkness and what the darkness does when light comes in. And the darkness couldn't do anything. In fact, the word says the darkness can't even comprehend the light doesn't understand it. It says the darkness is destroyed by the light. And so we wanted to test that. And so we went in there and she was locked back in the corner. She couldn't extend the wood. She just wanted us out. She wanted us gone. That's just a little example. This stuff is real. That's not, to, you know, God is real. The devil's real. We have, oh, here's what I wanted to say. Yes, we're in Christ. Now we have authority over the power of Satan. <laughs> Of all those demons and devils and Nephilim, we have authority over all of their power in Christ Jesus. Small example. Back when I was a young Christian in Virginia, this wasn't a Christian moment. Um, I don't, I honestly don't remember if I was getting a ticket or some, my friend behind me, Rob Smith, was getting a ticket. But we were on the side of the road and a cop was there. I was outside my car. But anyway, okay, I was outside the road. <laughs> it's funny if you know the story. I'm a young kid. Anyway, young and stupid. Yep. So I'm, we're, I, it, my my friends getting the ticket. So I'm looking back, and I know this, this car is coming down the road. I mean, fast, so fast, and it's when it, it gets the cop's attention. The cop jumps out in the middle of the street, just him, the cop by himself with his ticket pad, and this car is barreling down on him, and he yells, "Stop!" And he just puts his hand out with his pad. And that's all he does. He just yells, stop, one time, and he's standing there. He's a big guy. He's a big guy. But guys, in the physical, this car, or any car, or even a motorcycle, could destroy that policeman instantly. But what I saw was this. That giant cop yelled, stop, and he stood there. And that car started putting on the brakes. And it started, and I now can see the guy in the front seat. And and he comes, 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 and that cop doesn't move. And the car comes right up to him and his hands right over the hood. And the car does not hit the cop at all. And he says, get out. Listen, the reason I tell you that story, that is authority. The badge <laughs> imputed authority into that cop. And that vehicle, the driver recognized the authority and he stopped when he was told to stop. <laughs> Sounds like he had a little spirit authority on his side too. <laughs> yeah, he, God must have been watching because I was thinking, this guy's going to get run over. I really. But it's just a picture, right. a picture, a, a prophetic picture of authority. <clears throat> we also have dunamis because the Holy Spirit, we have the dunamis power of God. Mm -hmm. But what I'm showing you now is God has given us authority over the power of the enemy. Oh, 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 that's beautiful enough to take a drink on right there. Yes. Okay, okay. You know that I feel like that if everybody humbled themselves, like it says in his word, yes. and pray, yes. that he would heal our land. And um, can you imagine if all of us came together as one in America? I mean, at least the majority, the, at well, least the uh, Christians uh, alone. Yeah, let's just say that. Let's just say the Christians. The Christians they could, alone. Could come together. Could come together and pray over our country <laughs> right. together. Because that synergy Talk still works. Talk about massive changes. Right. I believe that. And I agree. <clears throat> I agree. Until the restrainer until is the, gone. Until we we're gone, authority. this is our job. This is what we are doing, actively waiting. One puts a thousand to flight. Two puts... 10,000 to flight. Do the math. Just do it. Okay. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay. Now, can I tell just a couple more stories? I'll try to keep it quick. We got good time. Yeah. <clears throat> because again, this has to do with us in Christ mm -hmm. over the enemy. Yeah. Okay. Now, our experiences. Our exper this is our experiences. Okay. I'm going to tell these two. First one, this one. Okay. In I Belgium. Can't this right here. I know. I can't read no <laughs> In Belgium, back when we were in Belgium years ago, uh, we were um, uh, mentoring, again, mentoring. We were mentoring this young Christian. Our, my lieutenant, I was in the army. My lieutenant, my, uh, my uh, first lieutenant, 
he got saved, okay? So we were ministering to him, he was in our home, and we were discussing, honestly, we were discussing the demonic, the power of God over the demonic, and just exactly what we're discussing right now, to be honest, spiritual warfare. And so, he began to go, he goes, I gotta tell you guys something, since you're bringing this up. He was nervous, honestly, and this is a, a lieutenant. And he says, um, in my home, I have something that grabs a hold of me. Now, we know, scientifically, like to say, sleep paralysis and things like that. <coughs> On the spiritual realm, we know it's a demonic force. So he says, I have, something grabs a hold of me and I cannot move and I don't know what to do. And I, I, I struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle until I let, until let's go or whatever and I get loose. But I, every night, it always holds me. It holds me. Now, I already knew, we knew what he was talking about. And because, you know, of those things, we knew about those spiritual things and all that. So as he's telling me, and he's getting nervous and concerned. He's like, uh, I don't know what to do. He, and, and, and he even says one time, he goes, um, last time, um, I didn't know what to do. It had me, and I, he cursed at it as the best he could do. And he tried to kick it, and it loosed. It let him go for a second, and he opened his eyes, and he saw this dark form go into the corner of his bedroom. Right. His bedroom right. is solid brick. Right. You can get a sledgehammer on the other side, and you can't. It's right. solid. So I, I just want to say like, where we were located was... Um, like like the military base that he was at was formerly a um, bunker for Hitler. Yeah, yeah. There's different, I mean, yeah, there, different there, areas there's over a there. Lot of, and there's a lot of uh, All over. what they call the catacombs over there. Oh, underground. Where a lot of people do a lot of weird things Sick over there. rituals. And um, so this was a really dark area. And I very really dark. felt like this area was very depressive. It was extremely and dark. A lot of, the sun rarely, the physical sun rarely broke yeah. out. Yeah, it was. That's a it was, whole other issue. It was tough, but anyway. But but God was training us. Yes. In spiritual warfare, in one of the darkest places that we've ever been, and to be honest, it was one of the darkest places. But in saying that, so uh, my lieutenant, Lieutenant Joe, not Lieutenant Dan, it was Lieutenant Joe. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so he that that dark form went into the corner. Okay, so he's telling us this story, and I'm smiling, getting excited, because I know, hey, give me a shot, <clears throat> God's gonna do something. Yeah. So I said, Joe, hey, let's go, me and you, go back to your house. And he lived in walking distance, just, we're in a little village, and he we, he lived just on, just down the street. So we're, it's at nighttime, so we go at night, and I said, God can do this, he can deliver, he can, he can, he can change the environment, let's just say. So he goes, okay, and he's nervous, but we go walking, and we're, I'm a little nervous to be, because it's so dark there, spiritually dark. And, and we're young. And we're and young! We're, we're, it's new in this stuff, we're new in this stuff. So, so we get to his house. I go, is this me? It's me and him. Lori's at home praying for us. <clears throat> so I go in there and we sit on his couch. And Lori's praying for us. We speak eating popcorn going, hey, good luck, you guys. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. She was doing battle for us. Okay. <clears throat> so we're sitting on his couch. I'm trying to speed this up now. I could feel it was dark, okay? But on the couch, I just we go, let's just start praying and ask God what to do. So we start engaging with God, Almighty God. Jesus Christ, of course, he's there, he shows up. All of a sudden, things start making noise all over his, his living room. <clears throat> I mean, just bang, noises, bang. <clears throat> Remember, his house is solid brick. <clears throat> you can't hear scratches and bangs from the outside. Right. So, we know this is a demonic thing going on. So, all of a sudden, I said, Joe, we'll take care of this. <clears throat> I go, God's got this. So, I said, Father, in the name, and I kept it simple. It wasn't drawn out. It was simple. We just took authority over it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command all those evil spirits to be bound in the name of Jesus. And we pled and applied the blood of Jesus Christ over his place, over all that. We did all that. And we cast him out. I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. All of a sudden it went wham <clears throat> on the other side of his wall. And then <clears throat> total peace, total shalom. And it just reminded me what shalom means. It was exactly what we just did. Shalom is Jesus Christ comes in and removes the author of chaos and confusion. So that dark force that was tormenting our friend, God came in and removed it and he brought peace. Yeah. And it was amazing. So that's, okay, I just, I, I got I had to share that with you right there. <clears throat> okay? Yeah, is, cool. is she okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's so, see. all right. One last story, and then we're going to move on off the slide because we have to. Okay, but we're doing good. All right. Your antique story, you want to start it with you, you, where you got, you got the vase. Is it about the vase? Okay. Okay? Yeah, it's a true story, guys. True story. So I was, um, I had an eBay store for a while back in the day. Yep. 
And so I would, um, I had this um, vase I had picked up at a um, yard sale. It was just a little tiny orange bud vase. Remember, for those new subscribers, when she used to do this, she would go with and in Christ Jesus, and he would be in her seat, and she goes, where do you want to go? What treasures do you want to get today? And she would go with Christ. I so, invited him to go with me. Right. So on those journeys, <clears throat> she found this vase. Now, I'm serious. Go ahead. I'm not kidding. Anyway, this, this so I, I found this vase, and um, so what I, what I would normally do is I take pictures of all the stuff, and I list it on the website and everything like that. So I took the pictures of the vase and <clears throat> um, what came out, because I never saw this, right. but I didn't see it until the picture, but there was a definite face. Oh. We'll put this in the community page. We will I still put, have it. yes, we'll put it up there. Um, There's a face in the vase. Inside the vase, okay? Right. So I'm like, that's weird, you know? Right. I mean, I, I, lo I looked at everything. Every that, aspect of that it. Because it looks like the guy has sunglasses on. It looks white. like he has like a curl And on a his white t-shirt. A white t-shirt. I mean, it's, In it's, the it's face. pretty crazy. Yeah. Anyway, um, and I just thought, that's weird. It must have reflected somewhere. But right. even though I couldn't figure it out. Right. So um, I didn't think about it. So, so you kept it there to yeah. sell later, possibly. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Let, let, let me continue. There you go. So that night, um, Nicole, uh, she has, my, our daughter, she has oh. a bedroom next to it. And it's like a Jack and Jill bedroom. Right, so at she our went, old house. She went through the bathroom because she heard all this noise in there. She thought I was working, packing up stuff and getting ready for shipping. And she opens the door and it's pitch black. And there's nothing there. And she's just like, And she thought there? you were in there working. Yes. So then the next day... Um, I kept hearing some bangs and booms in my office and stuff, and I just thought maybe maybe the wind had picked up or something. And right. Anyway, right, right, right. I, I didn't have time to go check it. <clears throat> she was busy. So anyway, um, that night, uh, Nicole was getting ready for bed, and she starts telling us, oh, no, no. No. I, I, I go into the you were, bedroom, our okay. bedroom, which okay, is downstairs. Yeah, you, were, you were in your office working. Me, Micah, and Nicole were downstairs. Then I, I went into, I came downstairs, and I went in, and I to took bedroom. a bath. Right. They're all watching a movie. Go ahead. We did not see her come downstairs, because in our older, older house, I'm just saying, so we were in the living room, focused on the TV watching a movie. We know she was working, but she came down the stairs and went into the room to do what she was doing. So we're watching a movie. All of a sudden, is it okay? Yeah. All of a sudden, as we're watching a movie, we hear... Bang, 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 bong, bam, bam, bam. I'm like, oh, gosh. Ma, we're watching a movie. What is she doing up there? I, 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 not to complain, but she could probably turn it down. I, I, I'm just saying, because it's bugging the movie. And so it stopped, and we're watching the movie, and then on, bang again, like she's doing something, maybe packing boxes, you know, getting her auntie, whatever she's doing. It happened like three times or so. All of a sudden, we're just watching a movie. Lori comes out of our bedroom, which is facing us, and she comes out and greets us. And we're looking at her, and we're looking at each other, and we said, wait, how long have you been in there? She goes, I, I was taking a shower, and I, I've been down here for however long it's been. And we looked at each other again on the couch, and me, Nicole, and Micah look up at the room where all the noises were coming from. And we said, nah, because our dog's up there. Well, well, yeah, because Nicole was getting ready to right. go upstairs, right. and I said, if there was anything Thing in up, there... Right. Anything demons or our, anything our like that. Our dog would be like freaking, freaking out. Freaking out. Go ahead. No, go ahead. All of, a, well, all of a sudden, the dog comes flying down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I mean, it's it, it, isn't that crazy? So um, I told Pete. I said, just go up there and cast whatever it is in there, out. Just go get rid of it already. You know. So so. <laughs> We did. So I'm not thinking, but I'm not thinking. I'm watching a movie. So here's how I got. I'm real. I'm human. She says. Go cast that out. <laughs> I'm watching a movie. I'm like, I'm watching a movie. So I hit pause. I want to, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm being serious. I know who I am in Christ. I know what's going on. But now I'm like, wow, that vase is up there. So I go up there and I'm feeling <coughs> and I go and I command that thing to go and bam, it goes. It, I mean, it totally goes. It's gone. Peace comes in the house and all that stuff. And I come back down and we all verify it. But it was, I mean, we have to tell you, it's a crazy story. Yeah. 
It stopped after that, and I got rid of the vase. Right, got rid of the vase. <laughs> but it stopped after that. Never had it again. But again, these are just examples, guys. We have a, a ton of them. Examples of the dark side. But when God's light comes in there, the darkness shatters. After I had um, seen the picture, I felt like, man, if I rubbed it three times, a genie would probably pop mm. out, which I don't want. <laughs> Like, right, exactly. Like, um, something like that. But I'll, I'll when I'll post the picture on. I'm laughing because now that now that we know what we know now about <laughs> genies, I wouldn't be rubbing anything, waiting for because that's a demon that we popping out. It's actually a demonic. Th anyway, had to tell you guys that. Had to tell you guys that. Okay, are you ready to move on? Mm -hmm. You ready? Okay, <laughs> move on. <laughs> okay. Just a reminder, I'm not going to read this. We're going to we're going to go into the matrix just a little bit. Again, Dramatria, letters equals numbers, huge database. If you're in Christ, God communicates. That's all we're saying. So, in doing that, if you notice our other videos that we've done, God communicates a lot like this and and it, it, it lines up with the word of God. Anything that goes against the word of God, you throw out. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, we have to go over this because it's just too crazy. Now, you know and I know, me and Lori look for anything that's out of the ordinary and odd and unique mm -hmm. as we're communicating with God mm -hmm. that might get our attention. Yeah. And we, and we've talked about this in past right. videos. Right. Um, but not very long ago, what was it, May 16th, I believe? Yeah, yeah May 16th. Um, a white buffalo, yep. pure white, was born. And it's a rare event. One in ten million. <laughs> Yeah, it's a rare event. And so that kind of struck a chord. And so we did some dramatria with that. And, and it was definitely talking about the Lord coming. Right. An amazing, amazing outcome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then. So, yeah. So then. On July 31st. Whammo. A one of a kind. Spotless giraffe. Spotless. No spots. <laughs> no spots. <laughs> no wrinkles. No spots. So pure we were white. like pure white and spotless. spotless. And this year, I right, mean, like, right. it's so crazy. So it's rare events. Yes. So because we're crazy and just enough psycho to do this. And just we, enough to believe. Yes. By faith. We said, God, do you have a message? Are you saying something? And we'll, you know, we'll tell the bride. And so a quick shout out. I see this is Tennessee. All of you Tennesseans. Hello, Lisa R. I think you guys are in Tennessee. So God bless you guys. Now, what God told us to do is this right here. Pure white. And spotless. And spotless. So yes, we now, put what that. what does that sound like to you? Oh, oh, you want to say it? The, when he comes back, he's coming back for a bride who is spotless, spotless pure, white, without wrinkle. He, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So it gets that clean. prophetic picture yes. clean. Yes. So guys, yes. So we had to put this in the matrix. So yeah. without any further ado, here's what is we're talking about. In the matrix, the same numerical value. So. The same, all these letters, they equal numbers, and those numbers have a value, right? And we put it together, and these next statements are, have the same numerical value as pure white and spotless. Now, we did spell out and. Well, of course, of course. I'm just keeping it but simple. Yes. Right. Yes. <clears throat> so, who is 777? That's one that came up. So, obviously, we know 777. That's that. We know that's Could just a number. Jesus? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. That's the first one. We're going to go right through this. Okay, that's the first one. Pause if you want me to pause on any of these. Okay. Christ is risen from the dead. So again, we're getting a picture. This is true. Okay. The next one, Jesus is our salvation. So, so far, we're lining up with the scriptures. Okay. Not to be funny, but it is lining up. Same numerical value as pure, white, and spotless. Jesus is our salvation. Next, I am the real God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So in case we were a little unclear, that we didn't know, the same numerical value is I am the real God, I am the real God, same thing. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, your kingdom will come. That's because our heart, our prayer, I mean, that is literally our prayer all the time. All the time. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Right? On earth as it is in heaven. Oh, you're so beautiful. I love what she <clears throat> She has all the beauty. Okay. On my way, see you soon. <laughs> On my way, see you soon. You want to do the next one? What's yeah. the next one? Here we go. Are you ready? To oh, go. I forgot to forget. Are you ready to go? This forget the date. Ready Are you ready to go, my, my child? child? Which is really cool because the um, in the Stellarium, right. everybody's talking about it. Right. Uh, Patrick from Hourly Watch, Watch right. has a 
terrific video. You guys got to go check oh, it out. Oh, yeah, definitely. Anyway, um, the child is about ready to be born That's out of right. the vir virgin. Right. Virgo. So, and my... it's a, my child, yeah. Child, it's called Child. The, the... Wow. I, I, you're reminding me. I'm forgetting. I forget. Okay, guys, there's so much going on, and there's so much information, and she knows so much. And I, when we come together, it's just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, you ready for the yeah, next one? Yeah. Here's your next one. Go ahead. The Brides and Bridegroom's Great Wedding. Exactly. And that's what we're waiting for. The Brides and the Bridegroom's Great Wedding. Same numerical value. Right. Okay. Next. Okay, here's one that just... Okay. I thought this was crazy. So the same numerical value, guys, as what we're looking at. Pure, white, and spotless. September 23rd. And also, separately, 2017. So... This is big, I think, for a few reasons. As you guys know, the, the Revelation 12 sign, right, happened on September 23rd, 2017. That was the, you know, all, I'm not going to get into it right now, but all that massive once-in-a-lifetime sign happened on that date. Also, God has been showing you what about this? That it <clears throat> could be the month and the year, because, you know, um, okay, in all the movies, a lot of movies, they talk about September 23rd, that this is the big doomsday, September 23rd. Right. Now, I believe, and this is just me, I think we're going to be gone before that. And I think that this possibly could be when the AC shows up, mm. because they're the ones professing it. Right. They're the false prophecies. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, they're gotcha. They're the ones that are, wow. are mentioning it and not... I see what you're saying. So, uh, anyway... Um, We'll wow. See. Yeah. You know, I'm not putting a date on it. No, 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 no. But again, it's funny because the enemy seems to be putting it. Uh, yes, a huge <laughs> thing. And because in that time frame, and we're going to maybe go over it later. There is so much, as you all know, with the UN, the whole agreements, all of that, all the sun, moon, star, all, all of so it. So much. Yeah. So that's what we're saying in this whole time frame right it's, now. Yeah. Like all coming to a. <laughs> yeah, it's, I know. It's all that way. We want to burst. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Next. Okay, okay. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. I had to put this in here. The last video when we were talking about uh, the Revelation 12 sign, the virgin. Okay, we all know, as I talked about, about Israel, and when we're harpazoed, Israel it gets wings <laughs> and is carried away for three and a half years to be protected. And that happens twice. So that was last video. So when this came up again around that saint, because this is her sign, that's the Revelation 12 sign with, with the virgin. So she. <laughs> Anyway, I just thought that was funny. It came out. Same numerical value. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Here we go. The return of the Nephilim. We all know that's happening. We all know that. Let's move along. Same numerical value. Okay. And separately, the number 23. Same numerical value. As you guys know, there is something massive about 23. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Something massive about 23. Let's see. Is there, is there one more? Go ahead. Going home to be with Jesus. That's what we're all waiting for. Whew. Well, well. after looking at all that, do you think God may have a message for us in that? Um, that he's coming soon? <laughs> yes. Yes, and we're going home to be very with Jesus. Soon, very, 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 very soon. Very soon. Very soon. Oh, yes. Thank God. Okay. That's our opinion, and we're sticking to it. Okay. Now, let's, we're moving right along here. What do we have next? Are you ready? We're going to... We're, we're almost done. We're, this, is, this is it. <clears throat> okay. We're not going over this. We're just reminding you. Remember, September 23rd, 2017. So there's the proof right there. A once-in-a-lifetime sign where uh, um, God miraculously told us, <laughs> be awake, alert, and watching because I'm coming. That was a major sign. A lot of people thought that was a rapture day. but right. Okay, before you go into the next oh, sure, one, sure, sure, I sure. just wanted to share something with you guys. <clears throat> and I shared a little bit about this on our last video, but I want to share it again. Um... The 42 weeks right there where it says... Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> right there. Okay, so I asked the Lord in April, how long, oh Lord, and, and, and this is, yes, I put it in the Gematria, I looked at all the verses and everything, and what came out of that to me was your birthday. And at the time, I thought, that's too far away, I don't know, you <laughs> right. know, I just kind of... I was like, no off, way. You know? But I went back to it because I kept it kept sticking in there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I thought, you know what? I want to see. I know I know this is weird, but I feel like that the there's something about 
the timing of my dad's passing <clears throat> that just sticks out to me. I don't know why. So I actually put in the date of his passing to my birthday. So I just wanted oh. to see how long was that. And it came up to be uh, 42 weeks, which is the gestation period. Oh, 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 gotcha, of gotcha, a woman gotcha. giving, having a, a uh, child. A right? child. Oh, okay. No. Wow. And um, I thought, wow, it, it came up actually 42 weeks and two days. So I took off the two days, oh. and which came to August 31st, which is oh, I got the you. big super moon. Um, Saturn is also following the, the blue super moon that's coming. Um, I just really feel like that these this is a really significant event. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, I don't know if... I'm not saying he's coming. Right, 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 right. I'm just saying that when I put it in um, the stellarium, uh, the baby is like, I mean, you would say crowning or getting ready to be born. Or just go so out and go it is, is very close. And I know that uh, there's a um, hourly watch has wonderful videos of it even going further. So it could be right. any time. Right, right, right. Between, you know, the full moon and the. Um, yeah. It, it, it's all high watch, trumpets, right, right. The twenty third, I mean, <laughs> whatever. You know, I'm just saying that these are significant signs that are happening. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And so, yes, yes, to everything you yes. said. I mean, it's not for nothing, right? And so, this is the one that happened on 2017, absolutely. And this is the one that uh, hourly watch Patrick talks about again. Yes. I'm not going into all this. This is just. Here's the Revelation 12 sign. Here's the Revelation 12 sign on steroids. <laughs> it's, it's, and again, yeah, Patrick and does an is, amazing this is, job. The date is September, September 19th. 19th. Which and, is? Is that uh, um, oh, so, one of the Feast of Trumpets days? Not, well, I'm going to get into the next slide. But oh, okay. uh, <clears throat> the 8th and the 19th is when the UN is having that big, uh, oh. with the conference and the reconfirming and all that stuff. So, yes, and it's also, I'll show you in the next the next slide, uh, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. From, from the first one in 2017, this is the one that we're having on September 19th, 2023. Now, what Lori was saying, right here in the middle where it says child, from her birthday, which is September 2nd, starting on her birthday, it starts to go past that line into, so you see what I'm saying? So from September 2nd forward, the child is being born. Mm -hmm. It's going over that line is yes. what we're trying to yes. say. That's what we're trying to say on that part. Um, I'm not, I, this is way too, this is a lot. Anyway, so what God was showing us for our part is to share on this, not to go over these two massive signs that are once in a lifetime, but he said, hey, what's the, what's the time between that date and this date? And it came up to 2,187 days, and which is five years, 11 months, and 27 days. And all those numbers matter, and all of you guys like MJ and, and, mm. and Baby D, all you guys, you can do all your special numbers, and you were going to come up with a message of God, I'm telling you. But all I want to do for now is, from this sign in 2017 to this sign in 2023, there was 2,187 days. So, I took that, and we put it into the Hebrew, and in Hebrew, it means to leap, or to spring, okay? In other words, boing, get out of here! So, anyway, so... <laughs> That's on the 19th. So again, from the September 2nd onward, we are getting ready to leap or spring mm -hmm. out of here. Now, in the Greek, is there anything in there? In the Greek you speak, it means Ephraim, which is double fruitfulness. So again, just keeping it simple, the 2187 days between those two signs, in the Hebrew it means to leap and to spring, and in the Greek it means double fruitfulness. Also, some of you guys know that in prophecy, Ephraim is also another picture of the U.S. and all that. That's, you know, whole other thing. But... Is that cool for now? That's cool. As far as, far as this part? That, okay, so now, for all of you guys that do like to do numbers, all of you, here's my assignment. Here's our assignment to you. Please, if you can, take these numbers, because this is the, the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the days, you know, all of it. Each one of these numbers could mean something, and potentially God could be saying a message in the Greek and Hebrew for all of us to do. Now, that will be just fun to do. I've actually done just the two of them, and I'm telling you, wink, wink, God does have a message there. So if you don't mind, guys, go, all of you that love numbers, do the Greek and Hebrew if you don't mind, and, and put it in the comments so that we can all benefit from what you discovered. Can I share one thing? Absolutely. Okay, so um, 
this is kind of cool too okay so god totally showed patrick from hourly watch all of this oh yeah and um i i heard him t giving his testimony and he actually shares my birthday which is so cool and um, awesome. i have never met anybody who has my birthday right right ever. september 2nd i don't think 2nd. i've ever met anybody who had my birthday right so um that's so cool it's kind of cool that um we both are like feeling like the the right the time because frame. this is our sign Right, there you go. There, no, it is. This is our birth sign. Right. right. And, and so I think it's really cool that he's, you know, doing so much to reveal this kind of stuff. I know. Us. It is awesome. And you, Patrick, you might not ever even see this, mm -hmm. but we love you and God bless you. And we, yeah. you were one of the first that we started watching, what, year, over a year ago, year and a half, whatever. And you encourage us so yes, much yes. that we're like, we got to start getting in yeah. there and do this. So you had to say, I didn't know yeah, you had the same all, birthday, though. All of your gigantinormous. <laughs> right. Gigantinormous. <laughs> yeah, we oh, loved it. Okay. Yeah, so. You good with this part? We only got yeah. one more thing, and then we're done. So you good with that? Yeah. Okay, so just be encouraged with this. Be encouraged. Now, last thing, guys, last thing. I'm a, Holy Spirit, please get over the revelation to us on this. Okay. P at some point, please read 2 Kings chapter 2. Okay, read chapter 1 and 2. They're short, but read chapter 1 and 2. But this is 2 Kings chapter 2. It's the story about Elijah and Elisha. It is a prophetic picture of the rapture, the harpazo, us being taken out of here. Okay, so in that picture, of course, you know, uh, 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 Elisha says, I'm going to stay with you wherever you go. And uh, he says, well, if you do, you'll get double my, you know, anointing, all that kind of thing. You know the whole story. Well, this is the picture of that. And, and, and also, we are seen as like Elijah in this picture being taken away well where Elisha is stays and like the tribulation saints will stay and go through the, those kind of things it's just a picture okay anyway in saying that I don't I hope I'm not studying stuttering and and trying to I don't want to be confusing <sighs> took a breath so here's what we're talking about Elijah says to Elisha three times to please stay here he says Terry here three times he says Terry Get that in your mind. Three times, he says, Terry. Elijah says to Elisha. He says, Terry, because I need to go to these three places. The first place I need to go, he says, I'm going to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. The second place, he's, uh, he says, now, Terry, stay here, because I need to go to Jericho, which is its moon or its month, right? It's a timing thing. Then he says, Terry here, because I need to go on to Jordan. Now, Jordan, it says descender. Now, this I got curious on this one, so I said, you know, I... I think I need to look at the Hebrew, and at least this one. I looked at all of them, but this one, here's the Hebrew, what it says. The Hebrew characters for the descender, which is Jordan, is Yod, Resh, Dalit, Nun. Now, when you put them together, the prophetic picture, the picture, the language picture of this, means this. By the mighty hand of God, the chief ruler, king, will open the doorway to everlasting eternal life. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that kind of sounds like a Harpazzo event. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> That's the first part. So, he tells him to tarry three times. And this word describes a Harpazzo event. So, it started to make me think. Okay, now, verse 7, very specifically, it mentions, it makes sure you know that 50 men are witnessing this. And they're on the other side of the Jordan, but they are witnessing this. And these men are sons of the prophets. So it's important that that comment is there. 50 sons of the prophets. So this prophetic picture that we're looking at right now, he's getting our attention with 50. I, I, now i got to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 just for a second. I did a teaching on this before in another video. Another watchman brother, I... I wish I remember your name. You're so awesome. Anyway, he put this study out, okay? And he says, hey, I'm, lo I'm looking at a pattern here in, in 2 Kings chapter 1. It's a story again. It's, a, it's about Elijah. And they, they want Elijah to come down from the mountain. Elijah, come. they want him to come. So the king, he sends off 50, and then he sends off 50, and then he sends off 50. Three times he sends off 50. Pentecades, a group of people. Now, I'm, it's a prophetic picture, okay? Yes, it's a story about what happened, but the prophetic picture is three times Terry, 50, 50, 50. So it got me thinking that sounds a lot like the three feasts, feasts that we've been doing, grain, wine, and oil. All of you guys know, Dr. Barry, all of us, everybody, all of us watch, all of us, 
We're banging our head. Oh, uh, uh, you're coming, you're coming. You know, Shava, oh, here you come, Sensor Day. Yo, Graham. We had to tarry. Then, the Pentecost, the wine feast. Oh, we were like, yes, and drinking wine, yeah. Terry, one more time, please. It's just a Terry. So we got another Terry. That's two Terrys. Now, what's just around the corner is the fine oils. The Feast of the Oils coming. The Feast of Trumpets, same time. So, Elijah, on that third 50, Elijah came down from the mountain. So, on this story, Terry three times, 50, 50, 50, Har Harpazzo event. This one, 50, 50, 50, grain, wine, oil. Could it be a perfect picture of the rapture, the harpazzo. I'm laying that down. We are laying that down before you guys. Just what do you guys think? Tell us yeah. in the comments. Yes? Yeah. But please put it up. You're crazy. You're off your rocker. Or eh, you might be right. Whatever. We got to hear from you. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not losing it. I'm not losing it. Now, oh, uh, I forgot. Yes. So, 50, 50, 50. So, do you guys remember we studied this in, in detail with Dr. Barry and others? Okay. Each one of those is a pentecade, is a pentecost, a pentecost, a pentecade. All three of them need to be fulfilled or complete. Complete grain, wine, oil. That's all I'm saying. So we're in that time frame again. Yeah. Around the birth. All of it's happening at the same time. Okay. I don't want to just beat a dead horse. Is that all we had? There he is. I keep, I keep, I'm sorry that I'm not talking, but. I keep feeling like I, I'm hearing a trumpet outside. <laughs> she thinks she's hearing a trumpet outside. I don't know. Okay. I, I'm assuming it's all the fans and stuff, but, but that's Lord. why I'm like, okay. I don't know what you're saying, but I hear something outside. She's hearing a trumpet, and I'm trying to explain to you guys that Jesus Christ is coming back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Is, is there? We're going to end. This is our last slide right here. And all the, the only reason is because of what, the dates that you've mentioned. Today is what? Is it, is it August 26th? Today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we are on God's number, 26, the ninth day of Elul. Okay, right here. Mm -hmm. So coming up, not too long, is a three-day full moon. August 30th, August 31st, first, which is 100%, and September 1st. A three-day full moon. Mm -hmm. And that one, is that called yeah. what? Yeah. Another, another um, thing that came up in Dematria, which I don't really the, know what it is, what? but is remember, remember the 1st of September. Oh, okay. That, a lot of people are talking about that, but I don't even know what that means. If you guys know, put in the comments. <laughs> I'm clueless right now. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but it's out there. But anyway. Okay, so three, three full moons. And, and remember, August had two full moons. Two moons, Molly, two moons, and all those people. So we have two moons in August. That's why they call it the blue moon, because it happens once in a blue moon. Blue moon. It's not really blue. Yes, <laughs> but it might be for some. Wink, wink. But listen. Okay, listen. Might be red. Blue Moon. <laughs> that song was sung in what movie? Back to the Future. 88. Where are they going? Oh, yeah. Open a portal. They're going through the portal. You get it? That's why. Right. Yes, baby doll. All of you guys that know what you know, you know if uh -huh. you know. Okay. Okay, I know I'm being crazy, but okay. Now, here's September 2nd. Uh, God's love day. <laughs> six, uh, six in the, there's And that's Lori's when they birthday. were disappearing. Like he looks oh, at the photograph. I know. And his They're family's big. disappearing during the song. Yes. You get it now? Right? right? Yes. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Yes. <laughs> we're getting this right now, guys. I'm sorry. We're a little crazy. It, it is what it is. I could care less. Here we go. Now, here's all September. Now, here's the... That's we're, why I'm saying we're crazy. We're crazy. Insane for God. Now, on September 16th, which is down there, September 16th, we are supposed to, to witness the sliver. Now, we remembered in Jewish culture, there are supposed to be two who witness the moon to make sure it's right. Wouldn't it be cool that if the two witnesses happen to show up so they could spot the moon, they could blow the trumpets, they could, wouldn't that be cool? That'd be really weird. That'd be really weird. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, we who knows but God. Are we good? I don't want to. I don't. I just saying this is crazy. We're in. We're in. This is the two minute warning. Oh, we didn't even put that. That came up in the matrix. It's a two minute warning. We're at the end. This is it. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is our opinion. Don't shout us down. We love God. If we're here, we're here. He's got us completely. We're we're okay. Mm -hmm. But it just looks to us that everything points to this time. So that's what we're saying. Are we good? Do you want to say anything else? Feast of Trumpets. The oil starts right here. Yes, they're celebrating the birthday of the universe and creation of Adam and Eve. Because remember, uh, in Noah's day, this was month one in, in Tishri. It's month one. 
Uh, but in um, Moses, where God said, this is what we're going to do now, that's month wow. seven. Okay? All right. So that's the Feast of Trumpets, the oil, the two-day feast, the Days of Awe, uh, Day of Atonement, and, right? Yes. I thought that was dead on arrival. Dead on arrival, and it could be. Okay, we got Okay, we got to move on. We got to move on. Can we move on? We're done. Okay. But one last story right here. Okay? Okay. Yeah. You guys know, uh, when I said no to this, they fired me, blah, blah, blah. Okay, no, all that stuff. No crying for uh, me, Argentina. Okay, now, <laughs> that's funny, because, anyway, job interview, Sushi with Micah. I, I'm going to start with Sushi with Micah because it's funny. So, Sushi with Micah, uh, it was a couple weeks ago. I forgot when. It was before our last video, actually, so it was a while back. We, I hadn't had a Micah day, so me and Micah had a fun day, just me and him. We went and had a sushi. That's one of our favorite things to do together. So, we went to this place that was phenomenal. I mean, it melted in your mouth. So, it's a whole thing around that. But, I noticed when we sat down, there was a, 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 a Hispanic family, actually all, all females. They were it was a young one, a middle one, and an older one sitting over here. The one lady has a shirt, and it says, Good Vibes. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Good Vibes. That's cool. And I could tell they were Christian. You could just sort of tell. Well, they left, and then another family came, and there was, a, 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 there was three women, and an older one and all that, a younger one, and a middle one, and they were praying for the food and all that stuff. And I let it go. But then as we're eating, and we're, me and Mike are just eating, having a great time, I happen to notice this other woman that just came in, her shirt, completely different shirt, completely different style, says good vibes. So I'm like, hey, Micah, I wasn't going to say nothing, but that's the second woman that comes in here with the shirt that says good vibes. Here's the reason I'm telling you this. So during our wonderful experience, God downloaded some wonderful information through our sushi. <laughs> I had to tell you, so two good vibe t-shirts, two separate families. Okay, jump into the job interview. Recently, in the last few days, I've been asking God, if you want me to work, if we need to do, I mean, I, I, I'm out there, all my resumes, are, everything's out there, no one's calling. Or if they call, they say, I still need to get this. Well, out of the blue, seriously, out of the blue, this one opportunity, they call me and they say, hey, are you able to talk for just 30 minutes? Now, <laughs> if you guys are in any kind of uh, tech jobs, when they say we want to interview you, the first interview is typically the recruiter just saying, are you even worthy for our beautiful experts to even talk to you? So you have to go through. That's normally the first interview. So I'm thinking, I, I can do that in my sleep, <laughs> that kind of interview. Okay, anyway, so, but I'm nervous, believe me. I'm going, I'm getting triggered. I'm, I'm telling you this for a reason. I'm getting triggered. I'm getting nervous. Old things are attacking my mind. And I'm like, Lori, can you please pray for me? I'm just so I can calm down. I don't know. I don't know what was going on, but I needed to calm down. Okay, so in that state, this company calls. I'm not going to give the name because I just don't want to. Okay, I, I don't want to do it right now. But they call. I'm on the phone with them. I answer the call. I say, hey, it's Peter. How you doing? And, and the guy, you know, he gives me his name. And um, it's not the guy, the low, low, low level guy that I thought was going to call me. This guy starts talking. He goes, hey, I got your resume. It sounds real good. And he just gets right into it. I'm like, I go, um, excuse me, sir. Before we start, what is your name? And, uh... What do you do? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I stopped him. He goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Uh, my name's, uh, and he told me his name. And he goes, I'm the vice president of advanced technology. <clears throat> I started choking. I said, vice president of advanced technology. I took a drink. Guys, I am not prepared for this kind of interview. Technically. Technically. I'm not. Emotionally. Not either. Anyway, so I said, okay, well, let's have some fun. So I, I began the interview. As I'm on this interview, I get two phone calls. I find out later it's two other companies calling me to interview me for a job. Long story short. So I'm, I'm going. <laughs> no this, calls in two years and right, suddenly all at once. <laughs> all at once. I had no calls all at once. You know, I was waiting for a management position. Anyway, I'm kidding. I wasn't. Anyway, so I got to tell you this. So this guy, this vice president, He's talking to me. I'm talking to him. I start talking to him like we're old buddies because that's the kind of vibe I'm getting from him. We've both been in the business over 30 years, very similar in a lot of things we've been in. We start talking like two old friends. I mean, I, and I'm like, and I'm telling him where I've been, what I've done, all this stuff. And I said this. I, I, I pulled uh, a Vince Vaughn. I said, listen, if you don't think I'm the right guy, just get it rid of me right now. Hang up the phone. Just get rid of me. He says on the phone, no, no, no. You are exactly what we're looking for. 
Now, I don't know about you, but if you're doing a, um, interviews and the vice president says, no, you are exactly what we're looking for, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So, long story short, uh, we'll wait to see. I still have more interviews. He wants the president to talk to me. She's very busy. Anyway, so keep praying for us. We'll see what that is. Either way, I think we're out of here anyway, but if we're here longer, God will provide. Right, That's the right, whole point, right. as well as the, the name, the name of that company that was interviewing me, the same numerical value, because yes, I put it into the matrix, the same numerical value of the name of that company equals good vibes. <laughs> the same, so Sushi with Micah, the women with the good vibe t-shirts, the same numerical value, good vibes, is the same numerical value of the company that is interviewing me that potentially wants me to work for them. That's cool. Let's just leave it right there for now. Is that okay, guys? That's really cool. Okay. So, you want to mention anything else before we go? Um, yeah. Okay, so, um, I guess on our last video... Oh, go ahead. We may have over-mentioned that we needed money. <laughs> what? No, but no, we didn't. Because, we let, didn't. listen, listen, listen. Someone had mentioned that we are over here begging for money. Right. I just want to say we are not begging for money. No. Uh, we totally believe that the Lord takes care of us. Absolutely. We have no... Um, we anyway, have a anyway, I, I, maybe maybe in the last video I was in a panic mode a little bit, but I'm okay. And we're I definitely do not we do not put this stuff up there because we, we are, are we are begging for no. money. Wanna, the only reason why it is up is because people have asked us if we have accounts so they to can give, donate to the and ministry. I was like, no, I don't want to do that. We fought it. People will be like judging us if we're exactly. Whatever. But there was a sister in Christ who encouraged us beyond belief, guys, this is of God. And we took right. it before God. So we had a couple of people ask now, about it. And so we thought, well, we'll just make it, it give it to God. Wait, wait. I got I to gotta say this. I'm going to say this. The comment was, how could you uh, promote them? They are just there begging for money. That was the comment. The statement that we made on that video was this. Thank you to all of you beautiful people that have donated to this ministry. If you would like to donate to this ministry, that's how you do it. Yeah. I don't know what world that is begging, but to me, that I, I got to say that. So, and now, also, in the scriptures, money is spoken of all of the scriptures. Money is a tool, right. a resource. Right. You do not have the love of money is a root right. of all. It is not got it? God. Right. It's a tool. It's a resource. So, I don't, I, I didn't what thing we had to say all that, but just so you know, we love you all. Yes. We love each and every one of you. And everybody who has blessed us, yes, I thank you. Of course. And those of you who have cursed us, I bless you. There you go. There you go. There you go. Look, she's living the scriptures. You guys know all this. It's the gospel. You can find the gospel right there, 1 Corinthians 15. It's all about Jesus Christ, death, burial, resurrection. The blood of Jesus Christ washes us, separates us from sin. Ephesians, it is by grace through faith. Oh, yes. His you, grace, his faith. If you have not come into the kingdom. Yes. Do it now. Yes. Do yes. It now, even if you just yes, just, you're the fence. You're the fence. You're the fence. You don't just, know. Just come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. It's so much more fun on this. Oh side. my gosh! It's we've been on both sides. This side is hilariously fun. Yes. yes. Okay. Right there, Romans. Believe in your heart. You confess with your mouth. You know that Jesus Christ, he rose from the dead. You you know he's your Lord and Savior. Yes. That's what that's all about. We are patiently enduring, actively waiting. Yes. Hey, guess what? What? Tell me. We'll see you guys in the clouds very, very soon. She's amazing and beautiful. <laughs> we'll see you in the clouds. She did it. Grab someone. We love you guys. Love on You them. guys are awesome. You're awesome. Yes, we love each one of you. Mary and Arthur, we will see you soon. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Can't touch this. God bless you guys. <laughs>